can find these mysterious objects everywhere in outer space. These free-floating planets are very hard to detect among bright stars, but what if some advanced civilizations use them as spacecraft and travel on rogue planets all around the galaxy? There are, indeed, a lot of free-floating planets to choose from. At the end of 2021, astronomers researched a cluster of young stars in the constellation of Scorpius, just 420 light-years from Earth. In much to their surprise, they found at least 70, and at most 170, rogue planets there. They don't orbit any stars and wander aimlessly around the galaxy. Kinda looks like a map of your neighborhood showing how many available taxis there are. And if we scale it up to have a look at the entire galaxy, we can expect to see more than 50 billion rogue planets at our service. The main problem is that this interstellar carrier is hiding from us, unlike Uber. Without the bright light coming from a parent star, rogue planets are very, very dark, and it's easy to mistake them for a smudge on the telescope lens. That's why astronomers don't even know for sure how many objects they found in that constellation. Maybe 70, maybe 170. But what we need is not just any random rogue planet. We need one that will be flying past our solar system and soon. According to rough estimations published in a recent study, these taxi cabs can appear approximately once in 10,000 years. The exact timetable is unknown. The next space ride may pop up in 100 or 1,000 years with equal probability. But what if we've been fortunate to spot this rogue planet that, by some remarkable chance, will fly past our solar system within the next hundred years? Then the rest is easy. We'll get to Alpha Centauri in a flash, right? You wish. It's simple to board a rogue planet only in the scientific papers they write with so much enthusiasm. Remember that unlike drivers down on Earth, space cabs won't waste a single second waiting for you. A typical rogue planet will swoosh past our solar system in just three or four years. It's as if your taxi leaves in three or four seconds after arriving. You snooze, you lose, and wait for another 10,000 years. At this stage of technological progress, we'll need more than a few years just to reach Jupiter, and the rogue planet will show up far beyond the orbit of Neptune. This means we need a spaceship fleet comprised of high-speed and capacious machines able to transport passengers and their luggage quickly enough to catch the intergalactic flight. But wait a second. From what I can gather, the main idea behind all this rogue planet travel was to stop using good old spaceships. Now it turns out that we'll never make it without them, right? However, the study's author doesn't give up and even offers an alternative option. To use a dwarf planet like Sedna as a shuttle that can easily take us from the planets of our solar system to its outskirts where the rogue planet will be flying by, just like an airport express train. Although, to make sure that everything goes as planned, we need to equip Sedna with powerful jet engines. They'll bring it closer to Earth and let us board our shuttle. And if we can make it work with a dwarf planet, then why do we have to wait for the rogue planet to take us deeper into space? I'll tell you why. A celestial body like Sedna is not livable, so we won't pull through such a long journey. But will the rogue planet itself let us survive? At present, we know about two things that have the most damaging impact on astronauts' health during long space missions – zero gravity and radiation. The gravity problem can be easily solved if we take any rogue planet the size of Earth. In case it doesn't have a magnetic field like Mars, we'll have to build shelters under a layer of soil to protect passengers from radiation. Under a layer of ice, to be exact, because a small rogue planet will resemble Hoth from Star Wars much more than Mars. But most likely, our space cab won't have any surface at all. All the free-floating worlds we've already discovered are gas giants as heavy as Jupiter, or much heavier than it. And although they usually have strong magnetic fields shielding them from cosmic radiation, passengers will anyway have to hide in a space station from that environment. 
In other words, in zero gravity again. Come on, it's not funny anymore. We'll need to install engines on the station to make it constantly rotate and create artificial gravity. But both the icy planet and the gas giant are unsuitable for cultivating crops for the crew, and our solar panels are pretty much useless far away from the stars. We'll have no other choice but to take our thermonuclear reactors that will supply energy to people and light to plants growing in numerous greenhouse farms. Hold on. Hold on, it seems we've just built an ordinary spacecraft for interstellar travel. Maybe it's time to give up on all that planet-hopping stuff and focus on this too common but so functional type of transport. The author of the Space Shuttle Project has one last bargaining chip left. Unlike spaceships, rogue planets race around the galaxy at enormous speeds and without any engines. It took the Voyager probes many years to accelerate, and even after that, they couldn't travel faster than 13.5 kilometers per second. When it comes to a typical rogue planet, the speedo needle hovers above 70 kilometers per second. Now that's what I call speed. And even if we find a way to accelerate our spacecraft with all the equipment to the record velocity of the tiny Parker Solar Probe, which is 160-odd kilometers per second, a recently found rogue planet traveling at a nominal 200 kilometers per second will easily overtake it, like some kind of intergalactic express train. Sounds exciting right up to the moment you check the date of arrival. Even hurtling at 200 kilometers per second, it'll take almost six and a half thousand years to reach the nearest stars in the Alpha Centauri system. This means that entire generations of passengers who dared to take this interplanetary trip will die on the way and will never see the destination. Moreover, the arrival could be delayed even further since any rogue planet will move past our solar system in an absolutely random direction. So, even if you're lucky to spot it in time, then get to it before it vanishes from sight, and finally quickly establish a permanent colony in orbit, your reward will be a chance to travel for millions of years to an unknown location. And if you secretly plan to weld a couple of turbo engines to the rogue planet so that you can steer it yourself, well, then my compliments. It seems that you don't need any rogue planets at all.